The last time there was a major airline price battle was in 1992. And that battle was called the mother of all pricing battles. But what then do we call the ongoing airline price war in Nigeria? Should we call it the father of all pricing battles? Maybe the stepmother of all pricing battles or the children of all pricing battles. <laughs> this is Market Square. My name is Oluwak Pelubi, uh, where, and I'm delighted to have you join me on the show today. Three issues are of great concern to us on the show today, which are the present airline price battle, the organized labor's request, and the inflation report for the month of March released yesterday. But let's start with the good news that so far in the month of April, Naira has been declared as the best performing currency. <laughs> the Goldman Sachs Group Incorporation, which is a leading global investment banking, securities and investment management firm that provides a wide range of financial services for corporations, financial institutions, governments and individuals, disclosed that the Naira performed better than other currencies in April. Now, this was in its latest report on Nigeria's economic realities. The report further suggests the Nigerian currency will exchange below 1,000 Naira per dollar in the coming months. Christians will say amen to that, yeah? <laughs> well, last Friday, we saw Naira eat a four-month high of around 1,142 um, Naira per dollar at the official exchange, foreign exchange market, as dollar supply increased after the holidays. Yesterday, the 15th of April 2024, the NatFest rate appreciated by 2.89% at 1,205 Naira per dollar, while the period change rate appreciated by 0.63% at 1,108 Naira per dollar. Goldman economists had in February predicted that the Naira would strengthen to around 1,200 Naira per dollar this year. They also said that they see it potentially, they see Naira potentially advancing beyond that level after a raft of measures by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now, despite seeing its first sustained rally since the Central Bank of Nigeria abandoned the fixed exchange rate regime, there is a tendency that the current momentum can only be maintained if the policymakers do not deviate from their current course. The Central Bank of Nigeria in the last two months has raised the monetary policy, poli uh, monetary policy rate, I beg your pardon, by 600 points at policy meetings in February and the one they had in March. And they also took steps against Binance, a cryptocurrency platform, and have also taken steps to ease the local scarcity of dollars that fund, that fund volatility and forced companies to the parallel market. Furthermore, the CBN has cleared a backlog of unsettled dollar purchase um, agreement estimated around $7 billion. Dollars, seven billion dollars. Now, just before I came on the show, myself and a colleague discussed as to the fact that um, the reason we are having Nera appreciate at the moment is because CBN is taking daily or maybe weekly from our foreign um, reserve, and it, it has some consequences. It has consequences, but I think uh, most Nigerians are happy with these moves. These moves have been appreciated by many, and the compliment from the Goldman economists. Next up, the organized labor has listed its expectation ahead of the 2024 Workers' Day and has called on the federal government to announce a new minimum wage on the 1st of, Ma or the 1st of May 2024. This is coming strong on the back of the initiated policies of the government which has pushed more Nigerians into poverty, which includes the removal of fuel subsidy amongst many other moves made by the federal government of Nigeria. Now, ends a statement by the national, um, he has a statement by the national vice president of the Trade Union Congress, Mr. Tommy Itim. And it has it that he said, presently the purchasing power is weak in the country, it is also expected that a new minimum wage will be announced on that day. Um, workers are looking forward to that day. Also, we expect that the government will finally use the opportunity 
to launch the CNG buses, which it promised over a year ago. These are our expectations. Again, these were not, these were not my words. These were the words of the National Vice President of the Trade Union Congress, Mr. Tommy Eitin. The organized labor, which is composed of the Nigerian Labor Congress and the TUC, have demanded around 615,000 naira monthly as a new minimum wage for workers in the country. And they said that this was reached after many consultations. There are speculations that the wage might still increase following the recent hike in electricity tariff. In a recent motion, 42 hours of representatives were in support of a living wage for workers and all advocated that there should be anything, there should be nothing less than 100,000 naira per month for workers. The agreement is that there shouldn't be a time in this country at this time when the minimum wage for workers will go below 100,000 naira um, considering many factors. After that meeting, the House of Representatives set up an ad hoc committee and the mandate to review the possibility of a living wage. It is clear that the rising cost of foodstuffs in the country has had a negative effect on the cost of living with the rising inflation that cuts across all facets of life. In fact, in 2018, Trade Economics reported the living wage for an individual Nigerian and a Nigerian family to be 43,200 naira per month. 43,200 naira per month. And that is around 137,600 um, naira respectively. This was pre fuel subsidy removal. To be frank, Presently, there is rarely a laborer that can live in Nigeria with a wage less than 100,000 naira monthly. Soon, we'll get to talk about the inflation figures for the month of March. But you can already tell in the country today that it may be very difficult for an individual to survive and, and to make ends meet consistently. Not just seeking daily bread, but making ends meet consistently with a salary lower than 100,000 naira. Also, according to the World Bank report, the low purchasing power of the Nigerian naira in the country, occasioned by a high inflation rate, has led to an increase in poverty across the country. Some months back in February 2024, the federal government had earlier inaugurated a tripartite committee to negotiate a new minimum wage for Nigerian workers following the fuel subsidy removal and the increased cost of living. The members of the tripartite committee met across a different geopolitical zones with workers, civil society groups, private sector players, government officials, ETC, gathering to discuss this issue. And from that meeting, the chairman of the Nigerian Labor Congress even stated that the new minimum wage should be one... <laughs> Should be 1 million naira monthly for workers. Considering the increased inflation rate in the country, the devaluation of the Nigerian naira, and other micro, micro and macroeconomic um, indices. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy of Nigeria, Mr. Waledu, seems to concur that the minimum wage um, needs to increase significantly. Listen to what he said recently. Well, I think that um, definitely there's going to be an increase in the uh, national minimum wage. That's the whole point of this um, exercise for the Southwest. It's, being go it's going on in the six zones of the country. Uh, the tripartite committee is in place to bring out a new mass national minimum wage. Um, there has been inflation. There has been depreciation of the currency, prices have gone up, and a new national minimum wage is well deserved and it is definitely due. And um, the actual figure will be as a function of a negotiation process. That's why we're going through this process. The NLC has come up with a figure, but it's not a one-sided uh, um, matter. And I think when we look at all the various indices, including affordability, and including sustainability, we will come out with a figure 
that meets those two cri criteria while doing the very best to give the workers a living wage, to give the workers a fair wage within the context of what Nigeria is today. Most important of all is that alongside an increase in, in wages and salaries and even pensions for those who have retired is an increase in productivity. And that's why the emphasis is on investment. Even at the micro level, at the small scale level, as well as the high level, investment in facilities, investment in machinery increases workers' productivity. If you have a, a, a monetary increase, an increase in the monetary award or the wages being paid to uh, workers, once that is matched by increased output, there is no problem at all. The point of concern is how affordable, and I know you listened to him when he mentioned that, how affordable and sustainable is the new minimum wage proposed by the NLC. First, I mentioned that the president of the NLC stated that what they consider, what they considered during the meeting was that there shouldn't be a worker in Nigeria who will get below one millionaire. But now they've reduced it to around 615,000 naira per, uh, per worker. That's monthly. Um, and this is something proposed to the federal government. And they hope that the federal government will do something about this um, before May 1st. The federal government should also be really of inflation. The idea is that when there is too much money in circulation, prices of goods and services will go up. It's basic economics. When you have too much money in circulation without a production playing at par with that, what happens is that the price of goods and services will increase. And so whilst the government is thinking of um, increasing the minimum wage, the government should also put in mind um, the effect, which is inflation, which is inflation. We've battled that for a while now, and um, it's something we are still dealing with. Now, speaking of inflation, the inflation rate for the month of March 2024 was released yesterday um, by the National Bureau of Statistics. Um, Nigeria's inflation rate increased to around 33.2% for the month of March 2024, according to the latest data from the National Bureau of Statistics. The inflation rate stood at 31.7% as at February 2024, which represents 1.5% increase from that. Despite this increase, what should delight us is that the increase in the inflation rate in March was slower compared to the 1.80% increase recorded in the month of February 2024. That's something to be delighted about, that our inflation rate only increased, it increased no doubt, but it increased pretty slow, right? Now, the 33.2% inflation in March was driven by an increase in food and beverages coupled with energy and housing costs. In my most recent episode on Market Square, uh, I had an interview with a correspondent of, I think, Business Day Nigeria, and then Ruth at the time, a Ruth, Miss Ruth. And she, we, we had a conversation as to the fact that, despite the fact that Naira is appreciating, the price of goods and services, uh, the price of food stuff especially, has not reduced. And we spoke about um, some of the reasons around that and what should be expected going forward. The link to that episode will be in the description of this particular video. In March 2024, the food inflation rate reached 40.01% year on year, marking an increase of around 15.56% point from 24.45% in March 2023. The increase of food inflation can be attributed to rising prices for items such as gari, millet, as well as yam tuba, water yam, and others. But on a month-on-month -month basis, the food inflation rate in March 2024 stood at 3.62%, showing a decline of around 0.17% from February 2024 when it was 3.79%. Urban inflation figures that track the prices of goods and services, specifically for people living in cities and town, reached 35.18% year-on-year, which is a rise of 12.11% from the 23.07% recorded in March 2023. 
noticeably, the figures in February 2024 and March 2024 was 3.17%. But there was a marginal decrease of 0.0001 um, percent point there. The rural inflation rate for March 2024 was 31.45% on a year-on-year basis, which was up to around 10.37% from what it was, 21.09% um, in March 2023. Comparing months, the rural inflation rate decreased by 0.20 percent point to 2.87 percent in March 2024, from 3.07 percent in February 2024. And finally, on the report, um, we we'll talk about the core inflation, which has closed the prices of volatile agricultural products and energy. The figure was at 25.90 percent in March 2024 on a year-on-year -year basis, an increase of 6.26% was recorded um, in that space there. The month-on-month -month core inflation rate in March 2024 was 2.54%, up from 2.17% in February 2024. What should we expect going forward? Although Nera's value is rising steadily as demand for dollar is reducing and the Central Bank of Nigeria's strategies seem to be yielding steady fruit, disruptions in the global supply chains are still causing problems which has led to shortages and price hikes for certain goods in Nigeria. Inflation trend should go upward in April, but this should happen at a much slower pace compared to the previous month. Now, if you compare the figures for January and compare the figures January and February and compare the figures for March, you will realize that, like I mentioned before now, that the increase was slower in March. And we expect that there will be inflation, no doubt. The, the figures are supposed to increase, no doubt, um, because we have not yet gotten a, gr a grasp of how to ensure that the price of, of foodstuffs reduce or remain, or remain um, as they were before this time. So we expect that um, inflation rates, inflation figures should increase or should happen at a slower pace than the previous month. Okay, that's our prediction for the month of April. Let's now turn our attention to the ongoing war. Yes, war. A prize war has broken out in the nation's aviation sector and every time there is a prize war, guess who are the major beneficiaries? We are. The passengers are the major beneficiaries. The customers are the major beneficiaries. And this speaks about the beauty of capitalism, right? A prize war occurs when businesses in a particular industry compete against each other by repeatedly lowering their prices in an attempt to gain a market share and drive out competitors. Since Nigeria's carrier, Airpeace Airlines launched its Lagos-London route on the 30th of March 2024 with a significant slash in airfare, its main competitors on that route, BA and Virgin Atlantic, have announced reduction in ticket prices to the amazement of many travelers. Fares before now used to be 15 millionaire for a first class seat and 5 millionaire in an, in an economy space there. The two British carriers are now charging over 80% lower in response to Airpeace introductory offer of just 5 millionaire for first class compared to 15 millionaire for first class before now. And then 1.5 millionaire for economy class compared to 5 millionaire before now. I mean, how can you describe this change? Would you call this change a change by impulse or one that was pre-planned? Would you call it a change that is a response to fear, right? Uh, or one that they talked about before to say, okay, maybe they thought about it in January saying by May, March this year, we're going to bring down our prices. But it looks too good to be through. Over 80% slash in the price seems to be um, a response to the price slash in, in introductory offer of Airpeas. Other carriers like South African Airlines, Morocco Air, Ethiopian and Turkish Air, who do not fly direct from Lagos to 
to London have equally reduced their fares. This has never been the case, such as a fares price war in a nation's aviation business like this. We have not seen um, a fierce price war in this sector like this in a long time. Mr. Allen Uyema, who is the chairman of AP, said in a TV interview last week that the foreign carriers are engaging in a price war to drive out his airline out of business so as to return to their cutthroat pricing, a situation he has described as devilish conspiracy. Of course. It's um, a very devilish conspiracy. Uh, all of a sudden, people are under, uh, airlines are underpricing. Underpricing. That is below the cost. Just in the space what, of what, one month. Yes. Not up to a month. One other airline was advertising $100. Another one, $305, $350. This, if you fill up the entire aircraft and carry people on the wings, it's not even enough to buy your fuel. So why are they doing that? Their governments are supporting them. Their governments are supporting them because Nigeria has been a cash cow for everybody. They're succeeding, taking a piece out. Nigerians will pay 20 times over once again. It's going to happen if, God forbid, they're able to take a piece out. Because what is happening now is scary. At some point in that interview, he appealed to Nigerians to fly a piece not just out of nationalistic consideration, but also for their strategic self-benefit self-interest. It is not the first time we are seeing price wars in an industry. It's the beauty of capitalism and the beneficiaries of this war are usually the consumers, customers, and passengers. In 1992, there was an airline price war in US, which is known as the mother of all pricing battles. The conflict began when Northwest Airlines introduced the grown-ups with kids fly free. The grown-ups with kids fly free promotion on the 26th of May 1992. In response, America Airlines launched an extraordinary fare slash and price slash offering a 50% price cut on every seat on every route in its system. This sale covered all flights through September 13th and within 24 hours all major airlines matched America's cut. Although there was an increase in volume sales, but huge losses were recorded. There was also the 2020 Russia-Saudi Arabia oil price war, which led to a 65% quarterly fall in the price of oil. For the first time, these two British carriers are getting a match in the Nigerian airline airpiece is the one making this happen. They usually use subtle but firm tactics to drive out, drive out and drive off competition from Nigerian carriers. But until now, they always have had their way. They've always had um, what Nigerians have called devilish conspiracy. You know, I mentioned that the chairman of airpiece said that on TV that um, what is happening now is a conspiracy to kick his team out of business. All right. And some of the, some of the tools or some of the features that they have used to silence many um, intending Nigerian airline carriers have been the fact that they provide good capacity. That means they have large size. Um, the in-flight service, wonderful service there. They're reliable and their services are quite predictable. Sev Epis needs to consider introducing an exciting loyalty program. It could be a cashback or a cashback is when you pay for something, you get a portion of your money back, right? They do it in some filling stations in Nigeria. They do it in, they do it in some, in some um, supermarkets, in some, in some cinema cinemas where you buy something and then you get a portion of the money you have you've paid back they could also introduce coupon code to get stuffs in nigeria so what they're saying what i'm saying now is that if they can begin to introduce like a cashback like a coupon code that can only be used in nigeria that will make sense for example if a person flies from london to lagos the person could get a 30 percent discount when flying from Lagos to Abuja. So it's, it's, um, it's, 
a gift. It's a discount for Nigeria in Nigeria, meaning that you are not just going to um, pay some money. You're going to get your money back and then you can use that money to buy stuff only in Nigeria and it's renewable only in Nigeria. Um, and also, if you want to fly within Nigeria, you can use uh, some of the some of the gifts you have gotten or the cashback you have gotten to make your transactions happen. And then that reduces the amount you pay eventually. It could be a coupon code that could be used at a filling station in Nigeria, a supermarket, eateries, cinemas, and even malls. But how about how about serving better homemade meals? Now I'm talking about how Airpiece can. You know, just own the Nigerian space there. Because we have a lot of Nigerians traveling every single month. Every single month. Nigerians are traveling. Just a month. Every single day, Nigerians are traveling. The Jackpot Syndrome will mo most likely return soon. <laughs> right? So, uh, but how can Airpiece own the Nigerian space? I've mentioned about, I've mentioned around, um, I've mentioned cashback. I've mentioned coupon code. Um, Airpiece can also consider serving better homemade meals. Imagine trying to book your ticket online and you have the option to select what soup, you know, whether it's a goosey, whether it's a gono, whether it's okra, whichever one you want, and then also select what swallow, like pounded yam, amala combination that you would like to have on the trip. Now, this may be an attraction factor for many, many Nigerians. Cool, isn't it? And before I came on this on, on set today, I thought about how about playing Igbo song? Yeah, cool. How about playing Igbo songs? How about playing Yoruba songs? How about having people make a request for songs to be played at some point when in the air? And that's a way to pull Nigerians to just pull Nigerians close. And you know, as Nigerians, we sometimes act, we sometimes act out of our emotion. We have this um nationalistic tie where we support our people, right? We support our people anywhere in the world. So having these, um, some of these incentive on board, having these um, introductory ideas on board, it might just be the advantage that Airpeace, Airpeace needs to embrace the Nigerian space, the Nigerian market. What do you think? Airpiece can use the advantage it has, knowing that Nigerians travel that route a lot. In fact, I learned in my research that one of the um, most traveled destinations of Nigerians is UK. One of the most traveled destinations is UK. So if Airpiece can look around these ideas, look around these policies, it may be a good place to just old, just old Nigerians to say, see, this is our thing. I'm going to make it work by all means. In addition to that, not just putting, not just putting up um, homemade options, homemade food options online, um, we could have more good in-flight service. We could have a system that ensures that only humble and efficient crew members are employed. We could also have on-time performance. This will go a long way in attracting and retaining customers. Talk of USP. Talk of unique selling point. These, so if you mention all of this, these are the things that some of these top airlines provide. They provide good capacity, good um, in-flight service and all of that. Now, Airpiece could just have the things I've mentioned before now, cashback, coupon code, seven homemade fools on, on flight there. They could have that as their unique selling point where every time a Nigerian wants to travel, that's, a, that's, that's something he considers as a reason to go with air peace, right? Amazing, isn't it? Awesome. On that note, we have come to the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me. I hope you enjoyed it. Do have to follow us on all our social media platforms. I'm talking about um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and just make comments and we will see and respond to your comments. My name is Oluwa Kwalubi Awe. See you on the next one.